All right. Um, so my name is Lauren Voswinkel, and I wanted to uh, have a brief conversation about talking about pay. We live in a capitalistic society, and in a capitalistic society, the main goal of everyone is of, of businesses is to make as much money as possible for for the the people who run them. So really, corporations are actually bound by law, at least in the US, to provide as much wealth for their shareholders as possible. That's uh, the, the board can ha bring lawsuits against a company that they feel is not acting with the shareholder's best interest. However, there's kind of a double standard because for people, the main goal that's pushed upon people is that we should be working hard. I have a problem with this because if corporations are people, like Mitt Romney says, then in my opinion, people should really be corporations. So really making money should be our main goal as well. One of the things that really bothered me uh, about switching jobs or, or moving to a new job is this question. What was your previous salary at the last company that you worked for? Avoid answering this question like the plague. Like, do everything you can to divert this, like, answering this question as much as possible. And if they keep coming back by saying we require this information, lie. Just, just lie about it. Get throw out a number. In the U.S., it's illegal for uh, previous employers to ask. Uh, for an, a potential employer to ask previous employers about salary information. They can only ask about the dates that you actually worked at that employment. So it's perfectly fine then to just ball-faced lie about it. Like, it's, it is, like, according to, to case law, company pay structures are a company secret. Well, if companies are allowed to have company secrets about pay, then so are we. <laughs> so that brings us to the next uh, thing that I absolutely loathe, is company policies and handbooks and whatnot that say that you can, uh, talking about salary is a fireable offense. This is 100% illegal within the US. I haven't checked Canadian labor laws. I know that the Canadian labor laws vary depending on the uh, not state, province. province. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. The province uh, that you live in. Um, but in the US, this was made illegal through the National Labor Relations Act of 1935. So that means there should not be an ability for a company to fire you simply for talking about your pay with other people. So with that, I'd like to say that I have eight plus years in the industry now. I've spoken at numerous conferences. I'm well read on industry topics. I actively practice programming in my spare time. I've gone to numerous code retreats, which is a, uh, another aspect of practicing programming. I teach through Girl Develop at Pittsburgh, and I am a senior web developer for a DC-based company, and I make $120,000 a year. What I just talked about here was the lightning talk that I gave at Cascadia Ruby last year. And it, I went around the room asking for other people to share their salary information, and I was absolutely terrified to give this talk. In talking about this, I found that there was a number of people who were floored that I was willing to do this in front of a group of 300 plus people and also who wanted to actively share their stories about times that they received, like they found out that they were getting discriminatory pay. Uh, one woman came up to me after, uh, after I gave this lightning talk and talked about how she, being a manager of programmers and a, um, a programmer herself, so a senior level programmer, was making $20,000 less than one of her employees that she managed. This type of, of discrepancy in pay thrives in an environment where we do not talk about it. So 
in November of last year, I was in San Francisco uh, for a, code, a, a hackathon for queer youth. And I happened to go out to lunch with a bunch of friends and talked about how I needed to make this a full length talk. I wanted to talk about the, the, the history of the labor movement and whatnot and collective, collective bargaining and collective uh, rights uh, with relation to pay. And <laughs> one of the people that I was with happened to be Shanley who runs Model View Culture and she jokingly said, well, I have this publication that might be interested in something like this. And so I took the hint and then eventually wrote an article for Model View Culture entitled, Let's Talk About Pay. In this article, I discussed some of the, some of the problems with keeping pay um, disclosed and how it breeds the inequity uh, of pay along issues of gender and race, not just through straight up discriminatory practices in pay, but also through the interview process and the negotiation process. Underrepresented groups, um, both along gender and along race and even in other cultures, are often taught, if not directly, learned through it, uh, through um, repeated consequences, that they cannot speak up as forcefully as a cis straight white male can. Um, about saying, I want this much. That type of behavior for underrepresented groups is often viewed as being pushy or uh, domineering. And so what ends up happening is people start making less money right off the bat. And because of that, con that question of what were you making at your last job, it leads to a cascading effect that has a vast impact on people's ability to earn over time. So in the article, I go over all of this, uh, all of these topics, and then I wanted to have a conversation as wide as I could spread it. So I created the concept of the talk pay hashtag, which happened on May 1st, which is International Workers' Rights Day, and had people actively share their salary information on Twitter and had thousands of people actually respond to doing so. One of the things that came out of it was an anonymous uh, service that kind of started because of uh, a woman by the name of Stephanie Murillo, um, who is a wonderful person, but um, she started taking um, DMs from people uh, from marginalized communities and sharing that information in an anonymized way. And I had a, a, a bit of a conflict with this while I recognized that the, the differences in, um, in how people will be punished uh, for being a minority in tech and sharing this information versus being part of the, he the hegemony in tech uh, and sharing this information is very, very unbalanced. But at the same time, I really wanted to see a push for people sharing this information with names attached. Uh, there's the service Glassdoor.com, which uh, has the ability to take uh, salary information for various companies and various fields and then share that with, uh, with people anonymously so that you can go and say, OK, well, I want to work for Microsoft. How much is a senior developer at Microsoft making? And you're given a range. The problem with this is that it's so easy to justify making towards the bottom of that range because you, can, you look at that range and you say, oh man, that person making $150,000 or $180,000 must be amazing at their job. They must do like, they must basically like speak and have enormous systems come together in the blink of an eye, when in actuality, they're probably about as good as Bob, who's three cubicles down from you. Um, so attaching a name to it provides that face for, for you to not be able to justify them making so much more. You can look at that person and see the number that they're making and say, you know what? I'm just as good as they are. Why should I not be making the same amount? 
And so the talk pay hashtag was created really to, to have those names attached to information so that we could get comfortable with sharing uh, this information. So that went really, really well. The, I was actually interviewed by numerous, numerous magazine, uh, magazines and newspapers like The Guardian. Um, there was articles written about it in uh, Elle magazine. There was uh, the French Slate site did a, did a piece on the talk pay thing. It was an international thing. Um, but I saw time and time again people who didn't want to disclose it, not disclose salary information, not because they were afraid of retribution, although there were plenty of people who were actively afraid that if they shared this information, they would be let go from their jobs. But there was this belief that sh talking about pay for whatever reason was either crass and not like uh, impolite to do so, or would be seen as bragging, or was a source of shame. And I wanted to take a bit of time to unpack that, at least in uh, the Western world. Um, uh, Max Weber, who uh, is a sociologist from the turn of the 20th century, uh, explored this concept in his book, uh, Capitalism, and, or Protestantism and Under the Spirit of Capitalism. And he goes over this concept of the Protestant work ethic and how a lot of, a lot of endeavors in, um, in the West seem to arise out of the, the Protestant beliefs that hard work is one of the best ways that you can appeal to God in many ways. That um, if you are a hard worker, that that shows the intrinsic moral character of, of, your, uh, of your being. So that um, if you are well rewarded for your work, that shows that you are um, divinely favored effectively. The problem with this belief, uh, which can kind of be summed up in the belief that hard work should be its own reward, is that it has this effect of placing a moral value on the amount that you make, which means that if you are in a position that you feel that you would need to discuss pay and compensation for your work, then you are effectively morally wrong because your work isn't strong enough to give you the reward you deserve. So it creates this kind of catch-22, which you end up seeing a lot in uh, in pushes for, for higher collective pay where you have people pulling other people down and saying, why do they deserve that much? They don't work as hard as I do. They don't have a degree. They don't have X, Y, and Z. When in actuality, they could probably, they are very much, they're just as likely to be struggling with making those ends meet because of circumstance, because they have been discriminated against, because they came in at, the collapse of the housing market and haven't been able to secure a job in their field that they earned a degree for. So this, uh, this problem just ends up snowballing, basically, where uh, underrepresented individuals in, the, in tech and in the workforce as, uh, abroad are basically lambasted for their moral character because they don't ha they haven't pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, which is the the presence of what's known as achievement ideology, which is another kind of offshoot of the belief that work should be its own reward and that if you work hard, you will get places. And so, my my current belief and my my goal with all of this is to make sure that we feel comfortable talking about this, that we don't place moral judgments on people for sharing information, that we get this conversation going so that someday you'll just be able to walk down the street and just meet somebody that you haven't seen in a while being like, oh yeah, I actually just got a new job and I make X amount of money at it. And then they go, wow, that sounds really awesome. I'm not making nearly that much. 
Are there any openings? These conversations should happen much more frequently and it's my hope that we continue to talk about pay and we continue to push to make all of workers, be, uh, push to make, make sure all workers get paid what they're actually worth. Thank you.